All right. Bottle of ale, dwarven ale, bottle of wine, bottle of wine. No, thank you. I don't think I need ale for anything, I'm pretty sure. Rotten food. I don't want that. Why would I want rotten food? Okay, let's go. Hold, um, do I know you? How? What are you doing in my house? No, you don't know me. I got in through those stinking cellars that smell of boiled cabbage. Lanelor asked me to ask you to unfreeze him, you see. He's getting rather cold. Boiled cabbage? Ah, the taste of... You are not an agent of Theliron Hashnator, are you? I'll destroy you, creature of darkness. Where's that spell? No, no, no. Lanelor. You know, the elven friend. Pointy ears? He needs your help. You've frozen him, and now he'd like to be unfrozen. What's that smell? What? Lanelor? Lanelor! Where is Lanelor? Speak up, stranger. I'll have you know that I could troll mighty magics, and I can kill you with but a word. Is that boiled cabbage I smell? <laughs> He's just outside. Please, calm down a bit. Okay. I'm actually not controlling my character. We're just following him here, slowly outside. Woot. Thank you, stranger. I thought I was never going to get out of that prison. Brr, my feet are still numb. Seven gods! My toes have gone blue. Let me rub them. Ah, oh, it hurts! <laughs> the blood is returning. Ah, <sighs> that's better. Now, what can I do for you, oh, my benefactor? Are you all right? Oh, don't worry about me. I'm already feeling better. We elves recuperate fast, you know. The first thing to do now is find a way to help Mardanius. The man is raving, and it's only a matter of time before he starts hurling destruction spells at shadows or passers-by. Look what he did to me if you don't believe what he's capable in his state. Right. Um, let's see. Is there something that can be done to save him? Well, if the demon theory holds water, the catacombs beneath Alaroth might provide a clue. They've... They'd be the most likely secure... Source place. Oh, wait. They'd be the most likely source. Places of the dead are spiritually closer than the non-corporeal realms, such as hell. Hmm... What are the catacombs you mentioned? Only a few people hereabouts know it, but there's a huge cavern system running beneath our feet at Alaroth. Some of it is an ancient dwarf looking, but most of it is natural. Several years ago, Mardanius went to explore down there alone. When he came back, he sealed the entrance and warned us not to go down by ourselves. He wouldn't tell us of what he found down in those pits, but whatever it was, it scared him. He once mentioned old catacombs and evil spirits to me, but he would say no more. So, how do I get into the catacombs? I've only discovered about it recently. During one of his trances, Mardanius mumbled something about the catacombs and the facing all the dragons to the north. Other than that, I'm afraid I have no idea. Alright. Uh, when I have more questions, I'll return to you. So. Um, our journal actually tells us what that means. According to the elf land lore, I must explore the catacombs beneath the village to cure Mardanius' odd behavior. The entrance to the caverns lies near four statues. I have to move all four statues to the north in order to open the portal to the catacombs. Lanelor warned me that the evil creatures wander the catacombs, and I have a very bad feeling about this. Yes, yes, yes. So, I believe there's like a little garden over here with statues. Here it is, here it is. So, yeah, we rotate all these statues to the north to get in. And that is the dungeon, but we're not going to go in there quite yet. We're going to explore the rest of, um the town here first and talk to everyone of interest. Let's visit this house. Ah, this is Lanelor's house. Okay, I'm gonna scout around a bit. I could have him heal me, but I'm not missing very much life and yeah, I it would cost me like a hundred gold, so no thanks. No thanks, Lanelor. Alright, in here we have bunnies and I just released all the bunnies, didn't I? Can I close it again? Nope. <laughs> Alright, sorry, whosoever bunnies those are. I guess you'll never see them again. Alright, let's go around. So, that was Lanelor's house? Did I put the wrong... That's Otho's house. That's Lanelor's house? That... I don't know. Whatever. Okay, and this is going to go to... Okay, let's go in here. Oh, worn leather leggings and a magic mirror. Let's take that. And a book. On Magic Obscura by Mardanius the Healer. Unfortunately, most pages of this book have been torn out. 
Maybe Mordanius did this by himself in his madness, so the evil forces shouldn't profit from his great knowledge of magic and magical artifacts. Only one section is complete and makes sense to you. Magic mirrors are far more common than any other object made by magicians. The making of the magic mirrors was once part of the earliest uh, education for young wizards on the entrance to a magic school of, or circle. You can use the magic mirrors to duplicate certain magical gems. Unfortunately, the magic mirror must be destroyed during the ritual, so you only get one chance at successfully completing the spell. So, how do you use a magic mirror? It's very simple indeed. My faithful people, first you have to find a, na a small natural pool deep enough to submerge the magic mirror completely. On being covered by the water, the magic mirror will vanish completely. Do not be alarmed, this is part of the magic. When the mirror vanishes, simply drop the magic gem you wish to duplicate into the small pool, and the magic will do its work instantly. The copy will be perfect in every way. Use your magic mirror wisely. But one word of warning, there are far more false magic mirrors in the world than real ones these days. And there we have our answer as to how to duplicate the gem to save the dudes, which is good. And there's some worn leggings somewhere, which I can't actually loot. They must be behind these. There they are. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, you have pants. Now I don't look like a slut anymore. That is very unofficial to me. I'm saving the game. Alright, so that is all that's in here, I believe. Um, but we will sleep until morning. There we go. So we need to be on the lookout for a magical pool of water. A natural, or sorry, a natural pool of water. Somewhere. And uh, we will need to go grab the gem, so we'll find the healing shrine. Um, I have never actually successfully duplicated the gem, so this will be a, a new thing for me as well. There's a graveyard. John, plague victim. Okay. An unnamed victim of fire fever. May he rest in peace. Okay, and this one we cannot click on, but the grave is here and it is locked. Here lies the late, unlamented Jake. No flowers, especially not from my wife. Signed, Jake. <laughs> Here lies Esmeralda, wife of Jake. May she rest in peace. Hmm, somebody's added a line on this gravestone. Good riddance. Signed, Jake. Jake did not really like his wife, did he? Okay, there's a bronze key here, which we shall take. Margareth. Plague victim. Dahlia. Plague victim. An unnamed victim of fire fever. May he rest in peace. Okay, so Jake and Esmeralda, they may be characters of importance. Let's remember that. Um, is there anything under this rock? <laughs> there's probably like a secret under some rock that I don't know about. I'm assuming because there's so many rocks you can move around. Augmenter. Is that a flower called an augmenter? That's an interesting name for a flower. Alright. A barrel and a locked door. Oh, look. The key is in the barrel. Just like keeping the key under your doormat. Fantastic. Fantastic. Alright. Okay. A hatch. Mm hmm, and a book. This book claims to be the famous orc freebooter. Corum Blood Club. Oh, by the famous orc freebooter. So it's by an orc, okay? Some say Corum died over ten years ago. Some say he might still be alive. This book looks old enough and Blood Club, despite his name, was renowned as an orc of education and sophistication. Perhaps this tomb is indeed from Blood Club's very own pen. It would be nice to find the other sections of the story. Hint, hints? Does that mean we can find more of these? The Adventure of the Dreaming Gem. Reminisced by Corum Blood Club, Orc Adventure, and Jewel Thief. Ooh. Part the First. Meeting. The dwarf's reputation as a treasure thief was second to none. That's why I traveled all across Revelon to meet her. Her professional name was Shadow, and that is the only name of hers that I ever discovered. We met in the Dwarven Bread Inn on the winter solstice of my 21st year. She was very comely for a dwarf, with a charming greenish tone to her skin and teeth filled, filed to points. I have always had a weakness for the women of other races, which is partly why I have been a wanderer all my life, always looking for a new exotic love and always hurrying away from the 
enraged husbands of my previous exotic loves. We ate and drank together, and, throughout the meal, Shadow belched and farted like a well-bred orc maiden. However, though I was yet young and callow, I guessed her charming table manners were solely aimed at softening me up before we got down to business, so I bridled my rising passions. After eating and some casual chat about the recent fad for elvish-style clothing in Rivertown, we took a private room upstairs and settled to discuss the deal I had traveled so far to offer her. Have you heard of the dreaming gen of Hest or the, uh, or the Vane? I asked her. Aye, what jewel thief hasn't? It is said to be a unique stone, and dwarfs who have seen it claim to be worth, claim it to be worth at least a million gold pieces. But it's kept in Hastor's tower. The place is impregnable, trust me. I've studied the layout with a professional eye. Nobody can get through the gardens. They're guarded by a demon, and even if you did, the magic traps inside the tower would do far would do for you. Wait. Would do the magic traps inside the tower would do for you? Um okay. So why don't you mention it? So why do you mention it? Oh, I replied as casually as I could. I think I have the way to get you past the demon in the garden. If, in turn, you can get me past the magical traps inside, I think we'll have a good chance to swipe the fabled gem and escape. To be continued. Ooh, okay, cool. Maybe that will lead us to some kind of treasure later on if we find the other books. Now, what was his name again? I'm just going to check really. Uh, Blood Club. Okay, we'll remember that. So... Um, I saved the game. We're going to go down here. We are. Let's see what weapons do I have. Um, any other weapons to use? Can't use that. That requires a lot of strength. But I should be able to sell it. I'm going to equip... Um, 5 to 11. Okay. More knife. Let's equip the sword for now. Alright. Some gold in that chest, that's nice. Always good. Nothing there. Really? Is there nothing down here or am I missing something? I don't see anything. There's probably something hidden, I'm guessing, right? Something... Well, I'm not going to search around for too long. Alrighty, let's go up here, get this corner out of the way. There we go. And then we'll make our way... Let's see, where have we gone already? Alright, let's get this little section here. This house. Who does this house belong to? A locked door. Excellent. Oh, okay. Um, the key that I got in the graveyard, I think, opened this one. That's good. Hmm. These piles of packages look suspicious. Oh, check it out. There is a hatch underneath. Okay, let's save it and go down. Maybe there is more to be had in this little dungeon. Nothing here. Oh, okay. I do know that this awakens a zombie. And last time, I died from him. So I'm actually not going to awaken him yet. Come on, get in there. Okay, one item. Gold. Nothing else. Let's see what's over here. Okay, I guess that guy's the only thing down here. So I'm going to actually make a note on the map that there is a zombie in that house. Is that note? That's where Otho lives. Right. 